Ladies and gentlemen, to begin at the beginning in one's approach to political economy and to the evaluation of various social systems, one must begin by identifying man's nature. That is, those essential characteristics which distinguish him from all other living species. Man's essential characteristic is his rational faculty. Man's mind is his basic means of survival, his only means of gaining knowledge. Man cannot provide for his simplest physical needs without a process of thought. He needs a process of thought to discover how to plant and grow his food or how to make weapons for hunting. He needs a process of thought to discover how to light a fire, how to weave cloth, how to forge tools, how to make a will, how to make an airplane, how to perform an appendectomy, how to produce an, ele an electric light, or an electronic tube, or a cyclotron, or a box of matches. Yet his life depends on such knowledge, and only a volitional act of his consciousness, a process of thought, can provide it. A process of thought is an enormously complex process of identification and integration, which only an individual mind can perform. There is no such thing as a collective brain. Men can learn from one another, but learning requires a process of thought on the part of every individual student. Men can cooperate in the discovery of new knowledge, but such cooperation requires the independent exercise of his rational faculty by every individual scientist. Man is the only living species that can transmit and expand his store of knowledge from generation to generation. But such transmission requires a process of thought on the part of the individual recipients. As witness the breakdowns of civilization, the dark ages in the history of mankind's progress, when the accumulated knowledge of centuries vanished from the lives of men who were unable, unwilling, or forbidden to think. In order to sustain his life, every living species has to follow a certain course of action required by its nature. The action required to sustain human life is primarily intellectual. Everything man needs has to be discovered by his mind and produced by his effort. Production is the application of reason to the problem of survival. If some men do not choose to think, they can survive only by imitating and repeating a routine of work discovered by others, but those others had to discover it, or none would have survived. If some men do not choose to think or to work, they can survive temporarily only by looting the goods produced by others, but those others had to produce them, or none would have survived. Regardless of what choice is made in this issue by any man or by any number of men, regardless of what blind, irrational, or evil course they may choose to pursue, the fact remains that reason is man's means of survival and that men prosper or fail, survive or perish in proportion to the degree of their rationality. Since knowledge, thinking, and rational actions are properties of the individual, since the choice to exercise his rational faculty or not depends on the individual, man's survival requires that those who think be free of the interference of those who don't. Since men are neither omniscient nor infallible, they must be free to agree or disagree to cooperate or to pursue their own independent course, each according to his own rational judgment. Freedom is the fundamental requirement of man's mind. A rational mind does not work under compulsion. It does not subordinate its grasp of reality 
to anyone's orders, directives, or controls. It does not sacrifice its knowledge, its view of the truth, to anyone's opinions, threats, wishes, plans, or welfare. Such a mind may be hampered by others. It may be silenced, proscribed, imprisoned, or destroyed. It cannot be forced. A gun is not an argument. The social recognition of man's rational nature, of the connection between his survival and his use of reason, is the concept of individual rights. Rights are a moral principle defining and sanctioning man's freedom of action in a social context. They are derived from man's nature as a rational being and represent a necessary condition of his particular mode of survival. The right to life is the source of all rights, including the right to property. For a fuller discussion of rights, I refer you to my articles on man's rights and the nature of government in my book, Capitalism, the Unknown Ideal, which has just been issued in its paperback edition. In regard to political economy, property rights require special emphasis. Man has to work and produce in order to support his life. He has to support his life by his own effort and by the guidance of his own mind. If he cannot dispose of the product of his effort, he cannot dispose of his effort. If he cannot dispose of his effort, he cannot dispose of his life. Without property rights, no other rights can be practiced. Now, bearing this fact in mind, consider the question of what social system is appropriate to men. A social system is a set of moral, political, economic principles embodied in society's laws, institutions, and government which determine the relationships, the terms of association among the men living in a given geographical area. There are only two fundamental questions, or two aspects of the same question, that determine the nature of any social system. Does a social system recognize individual rights and does a social system ban physical force from human relationships? The answer to the second question is the practical implementation of the answer to the first. Is man a sovereign individual who owns his person, his mind, his life, his work, and its product? Or is he the property of the tribe? the state, the society, the collective, that may dispose of him in any way it pleases, that may dictate his convictions, prescribe the course of his life, control his work, and expropriate his products? Does man have the right to exist for his own sake, or is he born in bondage as an indentured servant who must keep buying his life by serving the tribe but can never acquire it free and clear? This is the first question to answer. The rest is consequences and practical implementations. The basic issue is only, is man free? In mankind's history, capitalism is the only system that answers yes. Capitalism is a social system based on the recognition of individual rights, including property rights, in which all property is privately owned. The recognition of individual rights entails the banishment of physical force from human relationships. Basically, rights can be violated only by means of force. In a capitalist society, no man or group may initiate the use of physical force against others. 